Hello, I'm Ralph Edwards, and this edition of This Is Your Life, The Classics is one of the very few times our subject was not surprised, and it was intentional. On January 29th, 1958, an exception was made to bring our viewers a most poignant story of a lovely star who transfixed movie fans with her lyrical beauty, only to find herself in a world of enduring tragedy. Let's relive these rare moments with this extraordinary star. We want you to meet a beautiful lady whose life might well have served as the model for a play by Eugene O'Neill or a novel by a Theodore Dreiser. The talented star of Broadway and Hollywood, Miss Frances Farmer. Here's you. We need not say to you, as we usually do, tonight, this is your life, Francis Farmer. No? Need we? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> we know that there are periods in your life that have left unhappy scars on your memory. Uh, what then prompted you to accept our invitation to relive your life with us here, Francis? Well, Ralph, uh, in the first place, I just wanted to be able to tell something of my uh, own experiences to help people who have, I know, uh, been uh, in the same kind of predicament. I received so many letters. Uh, people who want hope or advice, even which perhaps I can suggest where they can find it. Yes. It's that sort of thing that uh, I wanted to do for them and for myself. I would very much like to correct some impressions which arose out of a lot of stories that were written about me, I guess, but they weren't about me. The, suggesting things that I could possibly have been doing, which I never did. I was, wasn't in a position to defend myself at the time these stories were published, and I'm very happy to be here tonight to let people see that I am the kind of person I am and not a legend that arose. Right. Well, we're going to try to help you do that, Francis. Other stories accused you of being an alcoholic. Were you, Francis? No, I was never an alcoholic. Uh, did you ever use dope? No, never. Do you want to uh, tell us, Francis, what it was that uh, interrupted your career and brought you to the brink of disaster? Well, Ralph, it was a combination of uh, quite a few things. So much had happened to me as when I became first successful as an actress. Uh, many agonizing decisions arose that I had to make, and uh, I just wasn't mature enough and didn't have time enough to be able to make them without time and peace to think, and I didn't have it, and I had a nervous breakdown. Yes. As a result, you spent nearly 10 years in and out of mental institutions. Child of a broken home, filled with ambitions backed by talent and intelligence, you reach the top rung of the ladder in films and on the stage. And then the curtain comes down on a kind of oblivion, and finally it rises again on the uneasy, hard road back. For all of us, has a radiant beginning, filling our parents' hearts with joy and dreams of bright promise for the future. For you, Francis, life begins in Seattle, Washington on September 19, 1930. Uh, how old was your mother when you were born, Francis? Well, my mother, I was the last of her children, and she was 40. Mm -hmm. You were an exceptionally pretty baby, so your father and mother had every right to be happy at the birth of their third child. Not for long, though. Your father was your mother's second husband, and then they separated. Now, how old were you at this time, Francis? Well, um, over a year old. I think I was one or two years old, as yes. I recall. To a child of this age, uh, this can have no special meaning, no inkling of the seeds of uncertainty sown in a little girl's mind. But here in 1917, life is fun and full of young excitement. It was about this time, Francis, that Mom took us to Hollywood to live. Yes, a voice out of your childhood, but one that's been close to you always. Your sister, Edith, now Mrs. Wilmar Elliott of Portland, Oregon, and here is Dee Dee, I think you call her. Here's Dee Dee. Come on, sit down here, Bonnie. Edith, right here. <laughs> now, your mother didn't bring you to Hollywood to put you in the movies, did she, Edith? Oh, no. But... Uh, we did get into mom scenes on the metro lot across the street. Oh, you did? Uh, we, our pay was the pennies that the director threw to the children. Yes. <laughs> well, it uh, looks like you got kind of an early start in movies there, Francis. <laughs> what kind of a little girl was your younger sister, Edith? Well, she was sweet and uh, full of fun, a good sense of humor, and uh, loved animals. 
And uh, but you had an independent spirit from the time you were little. <laughs> When, uh, you remember the family story about when you were four and I was five and we'd had a quarrel just before bedtime. And when I was saying my uh, prayers and uh, I came to the part, to God bless Mama, God bless Papa, and you sat up in bed very indignant and said, don't you God bless me, Dee Dee, don't you God bless me. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye morning, I'm sure all was love and smiles again, right? Yes, it was. Edith, thank you, Edith, Mrs. Elliot of Portland, Oregon. You'll see Frances later at the party in her honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where all her family and friends have been staying. Nineteen twenty-seven. Now, Francis, the year you enter West Seattle High School, where I'm sure your name is well remembered for many reasons. Uh, when did you move back to Seattle, Francis? Well, oh, as I remember, I was about in the sixth grade. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time, you really come to know your father, don't you? That's right. I've never really known Dad before. He more or less uh, inspired you to advance in higher education, did he not? Well, uh, yes, he did. Dad was a, a wonderful man and very affectionate and also very proud of his children. And he encouraged all of us to uh, study as much as we wanted to. One time, I even thought I'd be a lawyer because he was a lawyer. <laughs> yes, well, you admired him so much that... Uh, uh, in your early high school days, you did think of becoming a lawyer. That's right. Mm. It was this ambition, I think, that made Francis a star speaker on the high school debating team for three years. Well, one teacher you've often said, Francis, inspired and influenced you more than anyone else in your high school days. Here is that teacher, the Miss Chips of your life, Miss Belle McKenzie of Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Keep standing here, shall we, for a moment, and tell us, uh, Miss McKenzie, uh, Frances's interests were uh, now turning more and more toward writing, weren't they? That's true, but she had many interests and many talents, and an active and inquisitive mind that oh, tried to answer those questions of the Depression, and I think this prompted her probably to write that essay that won the National Prize that was sponsored by Scholastic Magazine in... 1931, was it, Francis? <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> well, this essay uh, created quite a furor all over the country, I understand. What was the title of your winning essay, Francis? It was called God Dies. Yes, and it, it opens with these uh, startling words. Uh, no one ever came to me and said, you're a fool. There isn't such a thing as God. Somebody's been stuffing you. It wasn't murder. I think God just died of old age. When I realized that he wasn't anymore, it didn't shock me. It seemed natural and right. Well, <laughs> I, I can see why that would disturb a lot of uh, people coming from a 17-year-old high school girl, Miss McKenzie. Yes, but uh, Francis was trying to say that God helps those who help themselves, and many people didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nor did they understand that a young person grows up in religion as well as other things. That's right. And that probably hurts you. Well... <laughs> I was surprised, most of all, other people reacted to it. It seemed to me so natural. <laughs> well, you, you were consistently an honor student, Francis, editor of the school paper, sang in operettas, got your first taste of the theater as the lead in the senior play, The Queen's Husband. Thank you, Miss Belle McKenzie. Thank you. From Seattle. fall of 1931, Francis, you entered the University of Washington to study what? Well, I started journalism first because my brother was a journalist, and I <laughs> thought maybe I'd be a journalist instead of a lawyer. <laughs> and then you went into... Well, then I went on into English because my first interest and love in the university was uh, to major in English and eventually write. Yes. However, uh, I got uh, very interested in acting almost my first year, and before I knew it, I'd be switched over to a drama major, and I was acting ever since. <laughs> and there you uh, come under the influence of another great teacher who guided and inspired you to future greatness on the stage and screen, the head of the School of the Drama at the University of Washington, Professor Glenn Hughes. Yes, Professor Hughes. What was your estimate of Frances Farmer, age 18? When she first entered uh, drama school at the university there, Professor Hughes? Well, of course, in the first place, she was very lovely. Uh, secondly, she was intelligent and eager. She always had a, 
a sort of intellectual chip on her shoulder, <laughs> and her uh, dramatic talent was uh, a bit slow in developing. Uh, but uh, we didn't worry about that because we knew the talent was there. The, uh, she was hard to cast. You know. So it was the third year that she was with us before we found a vehicle suited to her talent to bring it out to star her. That was the Catherine Cornell role in Sidney Howard's uh, Alien Corn. And she did a very beautiful job in that. And uh, it started her on her starring career. The play ran 50 nights, which is a record for a college production. It certainly is. Frances didn't finish her college course, did she? Uh, no, we're sorry about that. But you see, the point is that while Alien Corn was running, there was something else running. Uh, a <laughs> Seattle uh, local newspaper uh, conducted a subscription campaign. Uh, for, and the prize was a trip to Russia. Now, Frances had lots of friends in the newspaper profession, and they uh, put her name in and, uh, and got subscriptions, I think, for her. I doubt if she rang many uh, doorbells herself. <laughs> I never asked her about that. But at any rate, she won, and she went, and she got the trip to Russia. The next thing we knew, she was in Moscow. Much against your family's wishes, I think, Frances. Well, thank you, Professor Glenn Hughes of the University of Washington. <laughs> 